Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 15th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Portland, Oregon. A couple diaries from this weekend. First of all, I wrote up a little summary about how to detect cameras in your Airbnb. This has been a big issue the last couple weeks with multiple media reports about it. And I did a little segment with the Cyberwire about this last week. So I figured I'll write up and summarize some of the ideas a little bit more elaborate than I got to do it in this brief segment in the Cyberwire. Secondly, I put together the basic steps to implement MTA STS. MTA STS is this protocol that allows you to advertise that your mail server supports start TLS. And I implemented it now for the dshield.org domain. So I quickly summarized my experience here and the individual steps that you need to take in order to participate in this. Also the TLS reporting standard that allows others to tell you what experience they had connecting to your mail server via TLS. So far, it looks like only Google supports that, but with Gmail, of course, uh, sending a lot of email, that uh, may be quite significant. And for example, for the Shield, I did set it up in testing mode, and I highly recommend you do that at first thing you set it up, because that allows you to get a little bit confidence in your policy before you actually make it mandatory. And then we got a bulletin from cert.org regarding the missing encryption of sensitive data in a number of VPN products. Now, when you read that title, it almost sounds like VPNs aren't doing what they're supposed to do in that they're not encrypting. That's not really what they're talking about here. The problem is how are the credentials stored for this VPN? And they are pointing out two particular issues here. First of all, VPNs that save cookies insecurely in log files. And then secondly, cookies being stored insecurely in memory. Second part, of course, is in particular difficult to avoid. First part, that's a very classic mistake. But remember, in order to exploit a vulnerability like this, the attacker already has to have access to the endpoint to be able to read these cookies. And in particular, for the memory, they typically need administrative access. So I don't really consider uh, these issue like a uh, big, huge problems affected are Palo Alto, Pulse Secure and Cisco AnyConnect. According to the advisory, Cisco AnyConnect is only vulnerable to cookies being insecurely stored in memory. What makes this particular case somewhat more severe is that the credentials stored here are persistent connections in the sense that these are not sort of per session keys, but if an attacker does obtain these credentials, then the attacker can set up a VPN connection on their own at a later time. So it's equivalent to having username and password. And Microsoft published updates regarding its monthly rollup patch for Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. Apparently on these versions of Windows, if you have certain antivirus installed, like for example, Sophos and Avira, the system may refuse to boot. There have also been some issues with Kerberos authentication. So if you ran into any of these problems, uh, double check these uh, bulletins and look for or the workarounds. At this point, Microsoft disabled installing these patches for systems that have one of the affected or known to be affected antivirus products installed. And then we got problems again with MHTML files. Typically they use the extension MHT and they're commonly used in order to sort of save entire web pages. And we had a vulnerability with this a few weeks ago, if I vaguely remember, can't find it right now, but this new vulnerability looks slightly different. Couple problems here. First of all, this vulnerability only exists in Internet Explorer. 
Now, many of you may not use Internet Explorer as your default browser, but if you are clicking on one of these files, then typically Internet Explorer will open up anyway. The problem with an explorer is that it may interpret these files wrongly, which leads to an XML external entity attack, which then allows the attacker to read arbitrary files from the system. At this point, it doesn't look like Microsoft may fix this problem. And the reason for this is that in order to launch the attack, you have to actually open a local file. So this is not triggered by you visiting a malicious website with an explorer this is only triggered if you first download the mht file then open it on your local system by opening an html file not just mht file on your local system well you're usually giving javascript within that html special powers so in that sense this is actually not as much a vulnerability as really more sort of a an odd way of opening these files, uh, which may be the reason why Microsoft doesn't really consider this a vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.